Mr. Jenks, this may be the year I buy my own bull. Get something started. Murdoch's not coming in. You know, I wanted to miss a bull auction. Well, Murdoch's in Chicago. Uh, he asked me to buy one for him, too, but this may be the year that I buy my own. Shelly, you've been saying that for years. Well, the man's got to pick out just the right one. And if I get the right one this year, I might start my own herd. Maybe even start my own spread. But I don't need to tell you gents anything. Us cattlemen all talk the same language. A good bull runs pretty high, Jelly. Especially a prize bull, the only kind you would settle for. How high you uh, prepared to go? Oh, well, uh, I got enough. I've been saving. Jelly? Hmm. Oh. Yeah, uh, no, 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 no. Let me. Let me. Thank you, Joey. I'm going over and buy that bull for my father. You want to come along? Oh, of course. Can't miss that bull auction. Uh, Sky, you're picking out a bull for uh, Murdoch? Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, come on. We don't want to miss the good ones. Oh, wait. Wait. Uh, prices have gone up, Scott. It'd take maybe a uh, $1,000 to buy a bull that would satisfy Murdoch Lancer. Well, I'm prepared to pay some money for a good bull. What about you, Jelly? Are you prepared to go a, a thousand? Well, it's like I told you, I've been saving. I got a roll that's big enough to choke a cow. No, uh, wait a minute. Something's going on here. Somebody mind telling me what it's all about? Oh, we figured the Lancers would be the first to know. <laughs> Jelly here is buying his own bull this year. He's going to start his own herd. Maybe. If I see the right bull. Jelly, you've been saying that for years. Just the right bull. <laughs> You don't believe me, huh? Well, come on outside and let's fight. Uh, Billy, uh, you, you may never get your ball, but we sure got your goat. <laughs> you two, come on, put up your dope. Come on, Jelly. Now grab your beer, let's go. You oh, wait, wait. Jelly, we were just having a little fun. I don't know, we kid among ourselves. That's part of being a member of the club. Welcome. Welcome? Well, you know, in the past, you've always come in as a guest, but now that you're buying your own bull, Mr. Hoskins, we'd like to welcome you as a, a full-fledged member. <laughs> a member? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, there is, of course, a, a small initiation. You buy every fellow member a round of drinks. Oh, well, he... Oh, sure. no, you don't, Jelly. Now, you worked hard and you saved long and you're coming with me. Oh, oh no, 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 Scott. Now, don't ever let it be said that Jolly Hoskins can't pay his own way. <laughs> Barkeep, drinks all around. Corn cob. Yeah, and it is big enough to choke a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Jelly, you're going to raise cattle or corn. <laughs> Just keep laughing, you bunch of hyenas. <laughs> Mooney? Huh? <laughs> oh, go right ahead. It was worth it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was worth it. <laughs> Jelly, wait up a moment. Hey, Jelly, they were just kidding with you. I mean, it's just their brand of fun. It's not the most subtle, I'll admit, but nevertheless, it's, it's harmless. Look at it this way. If, if, they, if they didn't like you, they wouldn't kid with you at all. Funny way, it does make you part of their club. <laughs> you think I didn't know they was kidding? 
course I did. I knew it all along. That's how I was able to go along with it so well. I really had him going, didn't I? You sure did, Jimmy. Everybody knows what initiation's for. To see how well a fella can keep a good joke rolling along. Isn't that right? That's right. I remember uh, my initiation. First year I came out of here. Well, they worked me over just the same as you. Sure. Just the same. You come busting in there with a funny old scraggly beard and, and raggedy sleeves and a bankroll that's mostly all corn cob and a lot of fat mouth talk trying to cover it up. No, no, no. Of course, it wasn't quite like that. I... Yeah, it wasn't anything like that. Because you're big and proud and right. And anywhere you go, you don't have to think about fitting in. Or what it's like to be a funny old misfit that just don't know his place. Jimmy. Don't tell me that I fit and belong at Lancer, because I know all that. Just somewhere along the line, I'd kind of like to fit in with the rest of the world. Circus of the late good doctor Adair, who traveled from coast to coast and from world to world, collecting exotic creatures that he fully intended to come back and show to the citizens of all of the United States and various places of the world. Doctor Adair traveled far Feel like I've just been made a member of your tribe. Bird and beast ever to assemble under a big top and all for your benefit. Unfortunately, while his circus played your fair city, the good doctor Adair died of natural causes while dancing atop a bar, leaving his beautiful daughter destitute. But out of death and despair, opportunity rare to take home for the amazement, amusement, and approval of family and friends, these exotic creatures never before placed upon an auction block. A boa constrictor whose ancestors go back to the Garden of Eden, tame as a toad, and guaranteed to rid your orchard of apis gophers and bill collectors. The wild man from Barneo is not for sale. <laughs> He's decided to stay in your illustrious state and run for governor. But what do I hear for the sweet and loving serpent? Start with 30. Give me 30, 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 30, 30, 30, 30. Go here, 25, 25, 25, 25, 24, 24, 24. Give me 24, 24, 24. 22, 22, 22, 2, 2, 2, 2. Talk about misfits. Go here, 20. What are you supposed to be? Give me 19, 9, 9, 9, 9, Give me 9, give me 9, give me 9, 9, 19. Do I hear 19? Do I hear 18? Do I hear 17? Who will pay $15 for this beautiful boa? I'll take it for 15. Sold to the man in the bib overalls. He's the proud possessor of a prehistoric python constrictor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you just step right over here, you'll behold the bovine mystery of the animal kingdom. Defying the imagination of man. Pardon me, sir, what is this creature? Is it a cross between a water buffalo and a camel? Is it a mad mutation of an Australian kangaroo that hopped to the continent of Africa to mate with a rhinoceros? What is this macro-evolution monstrosity? Why did Noah slam the door on his arm? <laughs> These and all the other unanswered mysteries are yours as you buy and own the world's only animal made totally out of spare parts. <laughs> Since this prehistoric beast came to us from India... By that? The great mysteries of the Far East will be unfolded How much? as you meditate Anybody upon... Anybody be out of a stove at over 25. ...incredible animal. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, and gaze at this wondrous sight. Start with... 50, give me 50, give me 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 45, 45, 45, 45. Give me 40, give me 40, give me 40, give me 40, give me 40. Give me 35, give me 35, give me 35, 35, 35. Give me 30, give me 30, give me 30, give me 30. 
Do I hear twenty dollars? Do I hear fifteen? Do I hear ten dollars? Five dollars. Five dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Fifteen. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars and then? Twenty-five. Twenty. Five dollars now. There's a man with the wisdom of Solomon. What is your name, sir? Solomon. Jack Solomon, butcher. Butcher. I came me oh, what a beef bonanza. Did you ever see so much meat on the hoof? Well, the hump alone would feed an army. Rendered down, you'd have enough tallow to fill a wash tub. Horns over your mantle. A sideboard set in hooves. A mystical skin on your wall. And what you got left? Fertilizer for the farm. Food for hogs do I hear 30. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars from the man of the high forehead. A sure sign of intelligence do I hear 40. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Forty-five. Forty-five. Fifty. Do I hear 55, 55, 55? Who'll give me 55? Do I hear 55 dollars? Fifty-five. Fifty-five dollars. Do I hear 60? Do I hear $60? Who'll give me 60? $60. Six. $60? Buy it. Do I hear 65, 65? Let me They'll hear $65. Him. Do I hear 65? 65. 65? Sold to the man with the wisdom of the whiskers. We thank you, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll just follow me on into the middle tent, you will see Shackless. The great escape artist. He will hold you spell oh, while he performs. Miss. Miss. Yes. Oh, I, I bought him. Now what do I do with him? Breed him. Breed it. Sir, father was somewhat eccentric, but you didn't just buy an animal. You bought a dream. Dream. Sixty-five dollars. Sixty-five dollars. Well, sir, what is it? Oh, it's a bull. I know it's a bull, but what kind of a bull? Uh, how about a humpity dumpity? <clears throat> well, it's humpity, all right, and dumpity. And lumpity. Looks like it had a great fall or two. Well, it's got a lot of muscle. <laughs> He's got muscles in places I've never seen muscles before. Well, what did she say you were supposed to do about it? What do you mean? Well, what I mean is, what are you supposed to do with it? Oh, she's... <sighs> Why don't we just forget it and I'll meet you back at the ranch. Come on. Do you uh, want me to help you get it over to your horse? No. Come on. Come on. Now, wait a minute, Jelly. Now, just let me give him a little push, get him started. I don't want you to get him started. Come on, you humpback, splay footed, no good behemoth. Move out! Hey, that's it, Jelly. All you gotta do is learn to talk his language. Maybe I'll meet you on the way back to the ranch. This is what I've been hearing about. The answer to fences cutting off trails. A fence trail to the railheads. I wish I thought of it. Took more than thinking of it. Planning. Finance. And a lot of your daddy's land. Well, now, how else are you ranchers going to get your longhorns to market? You got to drive them. Well, maybe someday they'll build holding pens strong enough. They'll never make a pen the longhorn won't break down. Man, you got to drive them. There's no other way. Style. Hey! Come on, 
and you're making me the laughing stock. Grass around a little bit. What are you feeding him, Fred Yee? His back is rising. Just look straight ahead. Don't tell any more. That's worse than you said. Why worse? You went to a cattleman. switched if I know why I ever brought him home from town. Me, every feather of him. Now, I'm stuck with you. The only animal I ever did have that was worth that gum was when I was just a little kid. Big old shaggy sheepdog. Big as I was. Climbed all over me. Smart. You should have seen the way he could bring in the cows. Will you stop that? And one time he took up with a couple of cowboys out hunting for fun. I couldn't figure it out then. I can't figure it out now. I don't know whether they had a bottle or... Plum didn't have any luck shooting. Anyway, well, the cowboys come home, my dog didn't. Ever since then, I don't hold with hunting for fun. You getting enough there? Oh, hold still, it's cold out here. You hadn't eaten so doggone much, you wouldn't be so thirsty. Didn't that ever occur to you, stupid? Had it been for you, I'd... Good morning, my good woman. Stand your ground. Uh, well, now, no cause for alarm, ma'am. The thing is, I've got a thirsty bowl, and I'd like to borrow a hat full of water. Mr. Spence don't want me talking to strangers. Oh, well, I'm no stranger. I'm neighbor. J.B. Hoskins from the Lancer Ranch, 15 mile down. As long as you're a neighbor, you're welcome to water. Oh, thank you very much. Show well, you how to prime the pump. Tricky, devil. Oh, appreciate that. Every time a, a neighbor comes by, I have to show him. Oh, this is the kind that... What's that in my carrots? Great, that is my bull. That's no bull. Uh -oh. That's Hup. some unnatural animal. Hup, get out of there. Hop, get out of there! Hop, don't get... Ma'am, you peppered my bull! Beast of the devil! Give us some of that real green stuff, will you? Johnny. Well, what's that? What is that? Well, that's Jelly's bull. Jelly, that's a bull? Well, a man's got to start somewhere. I've never seen a bull that wouldn't charge. Did someone give them to you? 
No, I bought him. You bought him? Yes, I bought him. And if you don't keep away from him, you're going to get him all excited. Then you'll see him charge. Jelly, you couldn't excite him with a cannon. Well, he's tired. We just walked 30 miles from town. Hey, Burke. Come on, take him inside. I got him all wet. I don't want him to catch cold. Oh, uh, he won't move if you don't say, come on, Hump. Come on, Hump. Uh... Howdy, folks. Gravity. We're not back yet? No, not yet. You expect him, though, in a day or two. Well, I want to talk to him about my livestock trail. Well, I know he's interested. Why don't you wait over? Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Johnny. I'll just ride on up the valley. I've got a few more ranchers to contact. Tell Murdoch I'll drop by on my way back. About a day or two. Well, now. <laughs> that has to be the animal everybody in town's been laughing about. Me. They still laughing? Known as Jelly's Folly. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jelly. I know what owning a real bull could mean to you. Maybe I could help bail you out, though. Bail me out? Yeah, take that white elephant off your hands. I know a general store man up in the mountains where I'm going. He uh, collects freaks to attract customers. Here, put a lead on him. I'll take him along. I should get about 75 for him. 75? At dollars? Cash on the barrel head. That's mighty friendly of you, Mr. Rafferty, but no. Jelly, now, it's more than you paid for the bull. You better take it. You can get out of it, and, and you'll make a profit. And you'll save face in town, too. I can just see when Murdoch returns and sees what you bought with your saved-up money. You don't think Murdoch's going to laugh, too? Well, not more like Lance is a kindly man. But he's human. Well, I thank you for your kindly intentions, but no thank you. Now, wait a minute, Jelly. Why don't you think about what the man says? Now, we're only thinking about your own welfare, and... Mm. I mean, why'd you go buy that bull for anyway? Well, the girl said to. Yeah, but she didn't say what you have to do with it. Uh, well, she said to... to breed it. Breed it? To what? Oh, well, I've been meaning to ask you about that. About what? Uh, about putting him in with heifers. Now, boys! Now, you'd put that in with those good cows? No. Nope. Now, Jelly, we, we, we'll have to wait until Murdoch gets back and talk about it. And raise what? Your own freaks? We'll talk to Murdoch about it when he gets back. I'll see you all in a few days. Well, you don't suppose Murdoch will laugh, do you? I don't know, Charlie. <laughs>
back, I'm going to breed him. I got to get something going. Maybe even my own herd. Sure, Jolly. <laughs> fire, fire, fire! Get those heifers out of here! We just lost a few bales of hay. Then, uh, after that, I moved him up into the right. part of the barn. Uh, hey, Sam. Hey, uh, welcome home. Well, the boys told me you were here. This time you stay. Huh? This time I stay. How's the drive going? First rate. Okay, Jelly. Come along. Jelly's got something he wants me to see. Now, he don't have to stay in the main part of the barn like this. Yeah. Yeah, just for, for right now, until after you look and decide what we're going to do about it. Uh, uh, Hey, Murdoch, how was your trip? It was fine. Oh, here, right over here. See? What's his name? Humpity Dumpity. I mean, Humpity. Hump for short. Hello, Hump. <laughs> Friendly as the day is long. Expensive habits, hasn't he? Oh, well. Quality is as quality eats. Of course, Hump's more bull than most, and more places. What do you think, boss? Mm, just fine, and just fine. You're not going to laugh? Oh, why should I laugh? He's a very interesting animal. Very interesting. <laughs> See, he didn't laugh. He didn't laugh. You mean I can breed him? Sure, turn him in with the heifers and see what happens. Murdoch, well, you got one of the best herds in the valley. Well, that freak will ruin your herd, ruin your reputation. Go ahead, Jeffy. Let's see what happens. Oh, I can see this. Catch a cow? He isn't gonna need to. You just watch those cows come to him. They're really gonna crowd him. I'll fix the fence. Everybody told you you were taken. Offer still stands. Hey, Jelly. I told the other cattle breeders, I'm aware of your problem. Well, before he got into land, my father ran cattle. Yeah, he loved his animals and he loved the land. He deserved every foot of the empire he built, Sam. But we have to preserve those empires, and my trail will do it. Yeah, fences do become a problem. Well, eventually they'll cut off every longhorn trail to railheads. Why, you could be ruined overnight. But my national livestock trail will ensure access to markets from Mexico to the Canadian border. 
Sam, I hope you're not too deep in this. What do you mean? Well, you know, your father didn't own all of that land. No, no, but what I don't own, I've taken options on. To deliver the package to you gentlemen. I just said some of the men think that it's uh, too steep a buy-in just to use the trail. Well, now, it's a, it's a small price compared to being cut off from the markets. Legitimate profit. Well, I never begrudged a man profit. Sometimes he even deserves a big profit, if the risk is big enough. Well, we got the cattle rounded up. And I suggested uh, Jelly take Hump and put him out in the south pasture. Good. Oh, this is it. That's it. Well, what I heard, sounds like a pretty good idea. I saw a picture of an animal like that in Chicago. You kidding, an animal like Hump? Yeah, I wasn't sure whether it was a throwback to the water buffalo or what, but you know, there is an animal in the Orient called the Brahma. Brahma? A what, a Brahma? Nobody knows anything about him, nobody knows anything about well, Hump. Except that he's a freak. Looks like one. I didn't want to get Jelly's hopes up, but you know, I think he may have something in that animal. All the talk around the Chicago stockyards is that an animal like that might change the West, if we could get them to crossbreed with a longhorn. Oh, Murdoch, now don't ruin your herd. Could be the beginning of a whole new strain. The Brahma is stronger, heavier, more beef to the hoof. Also, they're docile, adaptable to feeding in pens at railheads. Well, that's ridiculous. They'd eat the ground bare in a day. Well, more and more, we're hauling grain to the herds. Maybe we'll end up hauling the herds to markets. Come on. Oh? Sure, to keep from running the weight off of them. And if we raise more beeves out here in pens, then the railroads will come out here for the business. Murdoch, Murdoch, you just don't make sense. Murdoch, if Jelly does crossbreed and comes up with this new strain, why the National Livestock Trail? I'll tell you why. Because if we don't protect ourselves, in 10 years, we'll all be out of business. Maybe five, maybe before. We lose everything. We move now or never. I mean, it's, it, 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 it's our way of life. Well, not you drive cattle. My father drove cattle, and me in his footsteps. We have to preserve what we have. What's to preserve, Sam, if there's a better way? <laughs> Concern when some of those circus animals died suddenly. Symptoms of tick fever. What about that bull? He's still alive, as far as I know. I had Jasper here back trail the way the circus came up from Texas. Yes, sir. Tick fever. Every place that bull stopped. And why didn't he die? Well, the herds would be safe if he had. Now, maybe he's grown immune. That means he's the carrier. Spreading the disease. Oh, he's the carrier. And he'll spread it. Until he's killed. Well, let's kill him. Doesn't have no point. You know, the way I look at it, I gotta have a real distinctive brand for my spread. Right now, I'm kind of partial to a... Uh, Humped out J. A humped out J. Yeah, you know, a J that's kind of pushed out and humpity. You know what I mean? I think so. You don't think it's too flashy. I mean, like some of these little tin horn spreads think they got a showboat with a big flashy brand. I think it's very apropos. You do? I was afraid you were going to say that. 
Jelly, I think your brand is going to be beautiful. I love it already, but unless I get going with these books, we're going to be retiring the Lancer brand. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Hey, maybe I ought to get me a ledger and start keeping the tally. No sense in waiting till the last minute. Jelly. Look, like I already got one entry. On bull tally, I got Hoskins Humperdinck. Humperdinck? Uh, yeah, it's the closest I could find in the encyclopedia. Uh, now, you don't think that sounds too ap after uh, what you just said? Jelly, for the last time. Scott, Johnny. What is it? Sam. They've come to kill that bull. Kill it? Yes, we yeah, we're going to burn it. And burn it. Tick fever. Wherever it's been. Now that bull's a carrier, it's got to be. It's pretty strong evidence. That's a lot of trouble. Oh, come on, Murdoch. Let's get on with it. Where's the bull? Yeah, our herds are at stake. Yours included. And your cattle trail. I found a bull! Where? Jelly hit him in the farm! Yeah. I can't stop him. I'm not responsible. But we are. Johnny Scott. Free the boy! Free the boy! Oh, no, 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 no! I know most of you men. I know most of you to be rational. Except when something like this happens. We came to kill that bull. When disease breaks out, you can't put your gun to the nearest head and pull the trigger. He left a trail of fever. Herds were wiped out. That's right. Yeah, our herds will be wiped out. Now listen to me. You know how long that bull has been here. Well, my herd isn't wiped out. Look at you. You're, you're like a mob. You can't wait to get blood on your hands. Well, not here, not tonight. We came to kill that bull, and we're going to kill him. Not tonight. Nobody's killing any animal on Lancer Line unless we say so. Now, you're protecting a killer. Uh, you could breed disease. Yes. Yeah. Well, Murdoch, I'm going to push aside that gun and kill the bull. No. Sir, they may be right. We've got a cow sick. She's running a fever. You hear that? One of the cows is down with fever. Ah. Should we isolate her? It's too late for that. Now, Murdoch, you know about incubation periods. Even fever takes time. It could go through the whole herd. They'll drop like flies. Sorry, Murdoch. All right, now let's kill that bull. No! We'll handle it our own way. We could go off someplace, Hump and me. We'll go to the desert. I know a cave. We wouldn't see anybody. He couldn't spread it. Wouldn't hurt a soul. No hiding out. Who knows about tick fever? The wind can spread it. To our herd. Now, you kill that bull, or we do. Anything you want me to do? No, I'll do it. Not here. Not in front of them. for all the trouble we caused you, boss. Come on, Hump. Here's your gun. Are you sure you'll kill him? I'll kill him. And burn him. And burn him.
spot, huh? You say we sit down. Just thinking. Why didn't any of the others drop? Huh? They start home, Hump. As far as the eye can see. Across the creek there, we're gonna plant you a whole field of carrots. They're gonna be sweet from that creek water. And you're gonna have a whole harem of heifers. But you're a great bull. They're really gonna crowd around you. There's gonna be a whole lot of little calves. Frisking and high tail. Looking up to you? They're your calves. Whenever you feel like it. Like whenever your feet get hot. You just go out and stand in that creek and eat carrots off the bank. Won't that be something? Shelly! Am I glad I found you. We spread out all over the place looking for you. You can put that away. I can. That cow got into Hump's carrots and found it herself. She did. Turns out she's with Calf. Pregnant? And Hump was the only bull nearby her. Humpy, <laughs> you old rascal. Is she all right? She's going to be just fine. It's going to be like I said, Humpy. Just like I said. sign of any disease. And my calf? Perfect little bull. First of his kind. Had to be. Had to be Dr. Adair's dream. Dr. Adair? Well, what'd he have to do with anything? Well, the young lady that sold you that bull, when she spoke of her father's dream, I assume that in his travels through the Orient looking for freak animals, he had the foresight to envision a whole new breed. My dream, too, to breed him. Well, there goes Rafferty's dream. There's a thin line between a dreamer and a fanatic, Scott. Rafferty couldn't see beyond what threatened his own world. Mr. Lancer. <clears throat> oh, yes. <coughs> Jelly, I invited the government and then out here for two reasons. Oh, well, yeah, to see if he was tick free, and he was. The <laughs> whole family's healthy. That's right, but also we wanted to see if we had something really of value here. They didn't come all the way from Chicago for no reason. Oh, well, people are going to be coming from far and wide now. Uh, Mr. Haskins, when Mr. Lancer wired us about crossbreeding the Brahma, and now that we see the results, well, we'd like to ask you to do us and the United States government a big favor. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I'm 
very patriotic man. I served with General Beadle, you know. They want to take your bull, Johnny. Take the bull? To the green pastures of a government breeding farm, Jelly, where they hope he'll become the nucleus of a whole new strain. More weight, adaptable to pen feeding, immune to tick fever. Immune to tick fever? Now we find out. We'll pay you handsomely, of course. Be bred to our finest cattle, selective breeding, and you'll share in what the animals bring. Jelly, I think it'd be quite an honor. I mean, for you and for Hum. You go down in history as J.B. Hoskins. Owner. You're going to give him carrots? Carrots. Hmm. Hear that, Hunk? <laughs> you're going the big time. This may be goodbye, but you're going to have that harem heifers, I promised you. <laughs> uh, oh, you got to say, uh, come, Hump. <clears throat> Come on, Hop. Hey, hey, you're gonna grow up to be a champion, just like your daddy. 